<laughs> okay, this is really weird. Is it starting? It is starting. Okay. Hello. <laughs> this is really different for us, so bear with us as we um, journey through this um, and we start sharing some of the information. And we're going to flub it up, uh, no doubt about that. So um, laugh along with us. Um, but we'll start with explaining, you know, who we are and, and what we're doing. So you can go ahead. Christine. I just have a question logistically. So how do we see like if people are following? I don't know. Oh, right here. Insights. Oh, okay. Comments. This is our first time doing a live. <laughs> Figure we're just going to be who we are. Yeah. So we're going to pause and whatever. So we'll give you all a sneak peek of our business card. I'm covering up our private information for right now until we get this up and running for good, but you can see Ghana Winjigewaquag. So we worked with one of our um, elders in the community to come up with a name that kind of encompasses the work that we're doing. Um, it's a combination of ancestry work, um, looking into boarding school records, reconnecting family to the language and culture. Hi, Janan. Hi. <laughs> Janan's like a pro at doing lives. This is like our first thing, so I'm sure Janan's going to be like, stop doing this or whatever, but that's fine, whatever. We'll, we'll take the advice. <laughs> um, so yeah, so doing a lot of work, reconnecting family to the culture. Um, it started with Penny doing ancestry work. I remember her coming over to my house, working with my mom. And looking at the family tree, and in my mind, I'm just like, oh, we already know most of the people, right? Like, why are we doing this? And didn't really understand the gist of it, right? And then I was pursuing my education at UWGB in First Nation Studies and took an Indian education policy class. And one of our projects was looking at how the Indian boarding school personally impacted our family. And we knew that our um, grandma had attended the Indian boarding school, so... Um, Susan Oriel was Joseph, and we were kind of always wondering if Grandpa had been too. We just didn't know, um, and he had died when my mom was very young. So it started with looking at Grandma's records, and then that led us to finding Grandpa's records. And I sat down with Penny after I got the list from what was at the archives, and Penny's like, oh, my God, so many names are on these Oh, wait, no, records. no, no, it, it was okay. way different than that. <laughs> It was way different than that. It was like, hey, Penny, I have these boarding school records. I'm like, what are your boarding school records? Like, and where are they? She's like, they're in the Chicago archives. You got to sign up for this account. So um, I sign up for this account and get this background check and everything else. And I'm thinking, wow, this is kind of legit. Um, what is in the boarding schools? And then um, she starts telling me all these names. And then from there till today, we haven't slept a wink. <laughs> Yeah. For real. Yeah. Uh, that we've been like knee deep in it. And um, yeah, so that's how it's, that's how it started with that phone call. Saying, yeah. Hey, listen. And then it became something really cool. Yeah. So we initially started, I reached out to somebody at the archives and told them about the work that we're doing. And he's like, well, I can digitize the file and send it to you. It's like, I don't know, 10 cents a page or something like that. And in my mind, I'm like, oh, well, that can't be that expensive, right? <laughs> so the first file we get is over 100 pages. I'm like, oh my God, this is going to get really expensive really quick. So I think we have over over $400 probably invested in getting the records digitized. And after that, the guy's like, you know, you guys could just come down here. So yeah, we went on, we created an account, we learned what it would take to be an archivist. Basically, you have to learn how to handle all the materials and what to do and what not to do. And we took, took a trip down to the archives. I think right now we have about 40 different groups of family members. Mm -hmm. So not just individual people, but families. Um, we haven't even had the chance to go through all of that. Just we started with grandma and grandpa, and then as we're finding people, we're looking into more extended family, like our cousins and aunts and uncles and things like that. But it's like Penny has a full-time job. I'm going to school full-time. I'm also um, a grad assistant at UWGB. So this is basically our entire life, right? If we're not working, we're doing archive work. We're looking at boarding school records. We're talking about historical intergenerational trauma, all of the things. And it's heavy. It's really heavy. And I think a big part of the work we want to do is not just handing these records over to family members because it's hard like mm -hmm. we're reading these things and i'm telling you it's it's tough crap it really really is tough when you're learning about what your family members have gone through and a lot of this they didn't share because 
there wasn't the space to be able to share, right? And so that led us to being reconnected with Uncle Francis. My mom reached out to him and um, my mom and I first went down to talk to him and, and he shared a few things with me, not a lot, but he started sharing a few things. And, and then, then, so the first time that I met Uncle Francis was via um, FaceTime with Christine. So Christine and my Aunt Donna, like she just said, were, were down there. And uh, so the very first time that I get to meet my great uncle is via FaceTime. So that made my heart hurt a lot. Um, but just, you know, kind of go back and back on what you said, um, you know, when grandma was alive and we would talk to her about her past and in some family and stuff, it was very short pieces of information, little nuggets of things that she would give us, but not a whole lot. Mm -hmm. Um, and then as we started reading these boarding school records, it was like, oh my God, that happened to grandma. She was there. I mean, it gives me goosebumps now just thinking about it. It's like, oh, this is crazy stuff, um, to think that. Our grandma was there and what was the purpose of these schools and you know so we had like so many questions um, and Christine you know meeting you know when you met Uncle Francis that was like our door mm -hmm. that was like a door to the inside of our past which is like she said it's very heavy um, very heavy stuff and yeah yeah and so we weren't able to interview our grandma obviously because she passed away and but my mom had the chance to talk with her a few days before she passed and that's when she opened up and told my mom about being in the schools and um i don't think i want to share on here that story um of what happened to her and aunt lil but um it's not good i'll, I'll share with family but i don't think i want to just put this on live right now but um so she was sharing a little bit of what, what happened and then the more we talked to her uncle francis the more stories he's opening up and sharing about us and so on one of our trips, we go to Michigan because we want to honor our ancestors by cleaning up the grave sites, taking pictures of the ones that we don't have, adding them to our ancestry records so that all of our family have record to that, right? And so um, we pick up our Uncle Francis. Um, we visited a couple places. We even went to Canada to try to search for family members. And that's a whole another adventure in its own, mm -hmm. a, lot of, a lot of just dead ends and I don't know. We're, we're still working on the Canadian side of things. Um, but so we also took Uncle Francis to the Gaylord Diocese because we learned that they should be, have housed most of the records, too. Uh, they were no help at all. Mm -hmm. They did not give us anything. But they did create this book of all the students' attendance records. So just like the years and the and, um the records of when they were there, so when they opened from when they closed. Mm -hmm. But she wouldn't give us the book, and she wouldn't let us buy the book. She said, oh, contact your tribe. Your tribe has a copy of the book, right? But if they have one copy of the book, and there's how many thousands of members, right? I mean, how long would it take for us to actually be able to get access to that? So that's one thing we're trying to do is get access to that book because in the archives at Chicago, it says Mount Pleasant School. But what happened with our family anyway is – Mount Pleasant was doing the intake because they were in the process of shutting down and moving students to Holy Childhood. That's where our family actually went is Holy Childhood, even though the records say Mount Pleasant. And so when we were looking at this book of Holy Childhood, I'm like, oh my gosh, these, these are the students that actually went to that school even before our grandparents were there. And what is it, 1885 to 1988, right? Yes. People think boarding schools was so long ago. So this is the book. And... Um... You know, we took some pictures of our family mm -hmm. um, in that book, and it's not, it's just their names, right? you know, and the years they attended, but that book is there. Yeah. You know, they have it, and they haven't put everything in it, which just really blows my mind um, that they ha feel like they have this right um, to withhold the information. And, you know, I think in part it's, you know, church versus state, you know, saying we don't have to abide by the you know, the laws, the federal laws saying that we have a right to this information. Um, but they won't tell us that either. They won't say, hey, it's because we're a church and we don't have to or we don't want to. I think it's we just don't want to and we're not going to. Um, so we're going to fight that battle. I think um, we're definitely prepared for that. Um, but we also found out, too, that the tribes, they, the tribes were given a book, this book. Mm -hmm. Uh, so I think we have to reach out to Sault Ste. Yeah. Marie and um, try to get a copy of this book. Mm -hmm. 
And I don't know how many copies were distributed. If the tribes are just going to release the books, I think there's a whole process of, you know, what do you want the records for? You know, all of those things. So I know there's many more family members than just what we've gotten, and we've gotten over 100, right? And so it's a long process, but I think it's it's amazing that other family are reaching out to us because they know we're doing this work, and we got a cousin Lori um, down in uh, Kentucky area, and uh, her grandpa actually never enrolled, and that's a whole process too, right? Just like they're tribal members, but they moved away, I'm guessing because of the boarding schools and them not wanting their kids to have to go there, right? So this totally disconnect, and there's a whole long history of that. I think as we're doing lives, we're going to share a little bit more of those histories and things that led to some of that. Um, but let's go back to our trip with Uncle Francis, right? So we're oh, going yeah. to the diocese. We went to Harbor Springs. Um, that actually led to, we did get a little bit more information. They did share some pictures with us, but not from when he was there. Um, and then Uncle Francis had agreed to do an interview with Harbor Springs. So we were going to do that like a few months later. So it had been a really long day. We dropped <laughs> Uncle Francis off and Penny's like, I haven't been to Sugar Island. Like, I want to go check out the cemeteries, right? So we go there. <laughs> Oh my God. If you're from Sugar Island, you know how the roads are, right? <laughs> Not all the roads are paved. You're going way out in the pop pop patch, right? So my mom, we're driving down the road and my mom's like, oh, I know uh, Gem Island Cemetery. It's right down here. I know it is, right? So we're going down. It's one lane, right? There's no way to turn around. There's like, you're just, you have to go for it. So I'm thinking, <laughs> you know, Chrissy, I was like, oh gosh, I could live out here. Now my husband is driving. So, and he knows how crazy we are, especially when the family gets together, we're all nuts. So we're laughing and talking or whatever. And I was like, oh my gosh, I could so live out here. I could so just, you know, it's remote. There's nobody out here. It's just so peaceful. Yeah. And Christine's like, are you sure you could? And I was like, heck yeah, this is the place to be, right? <laughs> so oh we're gosh. going on this run road. We see like um, a trail that was barely marked, right? And mom's like, oh, I think it's up there. She's like, but I'm not really sure. And it was kind of like a fork in the road. And so we're like, well, let's just keep going. We went up a little bit, realized it's not going anywhere. We're almost to the water, right? So Chris like backs up, right? Because what's the car? He's driving your car, right? Yeah, he's driving my Dodge. <laughs> it's an SUV. Uh, so it's not like super big, but it's not easy to maneuver, right? So he's like, oh my gosh. So I can just see it in his head like, oh my god would you please make up your mind on where you guys are going because this isn't like the first oh stop stop or you know and he's being so patient not a word okay all right so then he backs up oh, it's and nuts. takes a sharp turn to where the road mom was like yeah i think it's up there right so he pulls in and it hit i mean we all know how the spring was right it was a lot a lot of rain and stuff and it's like slightly uphill and chris is like yeah i don't think i want a chance of driving up there mom's like oh we'll walk it's not that far so me and penny are, are walking mom's ahead she's booking it because she's like i i know where it is i'm gonna keep on going and penny and i are talking and she's like what would we do if there's a bear out in the woods and mom can hear us right she's like you'll smell a bear before you see a bear and we're like <laughs> okay well you know we're just walking on the open no protection now mind you chris is down by the vehicle he stayed in the car because he's like oh you know what you ladies go <laughs> You go, and I'm going to wait here because chances are somebody's going to say, hey, get off my private property or something. <laughs> and it, I mean, you know the mosquitoes on Sugar Island too, way out in the woods, right? So we have like our hoodies up. We're and like, it's hot. It's it so hot. hot out there. We're like so sweaty. <laughs> and it's windy day too, right? So we're walking and you can hear the, the trees, like when they're rubbing together, there's like this squeaking noise. Oh, right? the trees. <laughs> no, there weren't. No, uh, okay, so there were some trees. So, but Chris, Christine is like six feet in front of me. And I was like, hey, Christine, did you hear that? Yeah, Penny. No, we both have our hoods up. So she goes, yeah, Penny, like annoyed. And my mom's yelling from up the hill. She's like, it's just the trees. And I'm like, yeah, it's probably the trees. No, she didn't say probably. She's like, Penny, it's the trees. And I'm like, uh, okay, but that's not any kind of tree I've ever heard. We take a couple more steps and all of a sudden I hear it, right? So now my hood's off. So I'm like, is that a tree or what are we hearing it, right? <laughs> and he's like, you heard it, right? And I'm like, I think it's the trees. And we're like listening a little bit more. And then we hear this. <laughs> and I'm like, um, I'm like, mom's up there. She's like a half a block to a block up there, right? Now I should also explain she had knee surgery. <laughs> she doesn't have the capability to run, right? 
<laughs> I'm already heading for the truck. You two can stay there. I'm out. So I didn't think she was serious. I didn't think she was like turning around leaving, right? So I'm trying to call my mom, like, mom, I'm trying to be quiet, but also like she's got to hear us because she's a little ways up there. Now, mind <laughs> you, too, while the two of them are screaming at each other, well, Christine is whispering really loud. And then I'm like, oh my God, I can't leave them here. I turn around and she's gone. She took off. <laughs> no, no, no. I was like, you know what? I can't, this is my family, legit. I have to be strong. And so I turn around, not really wanting to turn around, but I turn around and I go back to Christine and she's like, what are you doing? Run. <laughs> I'm like, oh my gosh. I'm like, go get Chris. You need to get the car and get up here. So mom's like, what? And I'm like, shut up. <laughs> She's like yelling. And I'm like, moose have no, like, they don't care who you are, what you are. They're coming after you. They don't, whatever. Mom's like, if it's a moose, it's fine. You just make a lot of noise. I'm like, shut up. Yeah. I'm like, so to whisper to her. I get right to the truck. Off. I get right to the truck. I'm like, Chris, Chris. <laughs> He flies out of the truck. He's like, what? I was like, get your ass on the truck. Start the truck. Start the truck. Oh, my God. He probably, I know he thought we were flipping crazy because we are. We're seriously crazy people. Oh. And yeah, so she's running down there, and I'm yelling to mom, and so she's like baby stepping it, right? I'm like, mom, run. She's like, Christine, I'm scared. I can't. I'm like, you have to. So she finally catches up with me. I'm like, hang on to my arm. And we're like trying to hobble along and like, but trying to run. And she's like, Christine, I can't. She's like, stop. It hurts. My leg hurts so much. So we stop and we're walking. I'm like, okay, maybe we're enough ahead, right? We'll be okay. My hood's still off. Cause I'm like, I want to hear how close this is get to us, right? And mom's like, Christine, it's just the trees. It's it's not a moose. I'm like, okay, let's just, we'll, we'll chill a little bit. Penny, I'm thinking in my mind, right? Penny's almost a Chris, he's gonna come up here. We'll be fine, right? So we're walking, and I hear it again. And I'm like, Mom, we have to run to the Christine again. And she's hanging out of my arm, and we're following along and trying to run, but walk and run and walk. And finally, we get to the car, and Chris starts coming, and we get in the car, and she's like, You would have left me there. Petty and I are like, We would have each taken a leg, and we would have drained your ass. We, we would have drained. We would have picked out the rocks later, but it's all good. We would have family. Oh we love our family. We would have got you home one way or another. <laughs> Never did see if it was the mouse was, or a moose. Wasn't going to take the time to look in the woods to see if it was coming after us. But then we convinced Chris to like, you should just drive up there. The road's fine. We'll yeah. be okay. We're like, yeah. Like, you got an SUV. He's like, really, Penny? It's pretty muddy out here. Just, I was like, it'll be fine. Just go. I was already up there. I'm thinking, oh, I was only like a quarter way up there, but I'm trusting my aunt Donna now that, you know, it is not muddy and, and whatever. So Chris is like, oh, I don't care. It's your truck, <laughs> whatever. Cause you know, he's not going to fight with three Indians. We're just going <laughs> to overrule. So anyway, uh, we turn the truck around, right. And we start going boof, bottom out. Oh shoot. Don't think that was good, but we still kept going. So good bonus. Right. And then we get to almost to the top and boof, bottom out again. I'm like, Ooh, this is getting kind of sketchy. We better, <laughs> here's me not saying a word in the front seat while my husband's looking at me like, mm. <laughs> we're not saying anything. We're like, Oh, it's all good. By the time we're up there, see, we got here just fine. Oh my gosh. So we get out of the truck and, um, it's the, the cemetery. I mean, for us, we were like, oh, gosh, this is bad. I don't even think we could see one gravestone. Um, so we're thinking, boy, the next time we go up there, we're going to have to clean all this up. Um, but we're walking around, and then I'm thinking, well, I haven't been in the woods in a really long time. I'm thinking, I'm going to have tons of ticks. What if I get Lyme's disease? <laughs> or what if I get West Niles? <laughs> or whatever, right? And then my Aunt Donna, she doesn't care. She's out in there already, and I'm like, hey look for Susan, look for Joseph. And she's in there, you know, pickering around and Christine's and the mosquitoes up there. are terrible. We got our hoods oh. up. They're just, I mean, they're just swarms of them. Yeah. And then, and Chris doesn't have, you know, he's yeah. a nice smooth bald head, right? Yeah. <laughs> sweating profusely because it is so hot. So what do mosquitoes do when you're sweating? <laughs> so I turn around and look at him. I'm thinking, Oh my dear. <laughs> He is like engulfed in this big cloud of mosquitoes. And I thought, oh, he's going to hate us forever. <laughs> this is terrible. So then I go over there and I start dousing him with deets, right? And I ruin his clothes because I'm so close. And this deed is like really, I mean, he's got stripes everywhere all over him. Um, and it didn't come out of the clothes, P.S. 
Uh, but we felt terrible. Not terrible enough to leave. <laughs> But we I ran. Terrible. I went to the car. I'm like, I can't. I, I'm getting fit up. I, I can't. I, I sat in the car. They're yeah. out there, and it's so hot out there too. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh! It was bad. It only took a few minutes, but we're like, oh, this is crazy. Uh, we need to come with like mosquito nets and the painter suit, yes. and you know, and we're going to. Um, we're definitely going to do that. So, um, but yeah, and I'm still married. <laughs> He didn't, he didn't leave us and take no. off on us. <laughs> no, but he did say when we got to the hotel, he said, I am done volunteering for the three of you. To chauffeur us around, right? <laughs> I'm no longer your chauffeur. I'm like, oh, God dang it. We like you driving. Yeah. It gives us a chance to talk about things, right? I'm like, yeah. darn. Yeah. But a month later, we went back up there and he He's was driving us stuff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, so. that's another one of our trips back then is to... Maybe when it's a little bit cooler, or we're thinking maybe towards the end of October, going back up, and yeah. it'll be okay if we have hoodies on and everything because it won't be so hot out, and hopefully yeah. the mosquitoes won't be as terrible. But Penny and Chris have already started the work going to other cemeteries and cleaning up the sites. You can actually, like, read the headstones. Um, some of them are, like, tipped over. You can barely see them. Some, like, the markers are even gone. You don't mm -hmm. even know who's there anymore. We know that our, um, our Grandpa Philip um is in St. Ignace and Josephine our grandmother is supposed to be buried next to her and there's just like a, a marker across and then there's another one next to them we're thinking it's um Josephine and then one of their kids but it's not marked and so I think eventually we want to try to work with the cemeteries and work with the family on getting real headstones and markers or something so that people coming to visit know and then hopefully are able to get there and take care you know because we're right. in Wisconsin we're not up in Michigan right but uh, we definitely want to do what we can to clean up the sites and that kind of stuff too so yeah. family know where family is right and they right. can go visit and things like that too so yeah you know a, a part of that too is some of the cemeteries have moved the bodies which is so crazy so um so moving the bodies and then not telling the families that the bodies have been moved or that you know um the markers or or whatever so that's kind of disturbing. So uh, we're researching that a little bit too, um, finding out some more information on that, like who really is responsible for um, taking care of the cemeteries? Is it the families? Um, is it the cities? And, and things like that. So just bringing more awareness about that because I think our ancestors are super important to our future uh, and we, we definitely need to take care of them. So um, learning that I think is gonna be heavy too, but um, it's already proven to be heavy, but mm -hmm. um, we'll definitely share as we move along um, mm -hmm. that journey too. So I hope you all stay tuned yeah. um, for future ones. And, you know, feel free to put in the comments of things that you want us to talk about, um, that you would like us to research, um, different things like that. Uh, Christine and I will get together um, maybe once a week or every other week, depending on our schedules, um, and do these you know, live events just so we can, you know, bring awareness and share, share our stories, mm -hmm. um, happy or otherwise. Um, because despite all the heaviness, um, we're family and we do have a serious amount of fun. So, yeah. Oh, we do. Yeah. So I forgot to mention too. So how the nonprofit itself started, right. Is during this trip with uncle Francis and we're driving and when we're going to Canada and stuff, it's like, it's a long drive, right? So uncle Francis is talking with us and stuff and we stopped in, um, it, it was one spotting in uh, Canada. I think it was Algoma, Algoma. University, mm -hmm. right? I'm in the parking lot and he's reaching in his wallet and I'm like, what's, what's he doing, right? He takes a dollar and he hands it to us. And he said, the work you ladies are doing is important. And he said, you need to start a nonprofit around the work that you're doing so you can get funded to go on these trips, right? To cover your hotel expenses, to cover your gas expenses, to pay for records, whatever you need. You need to get this up and running. And me and Penny are like bawling, right? We're like, what? Like, I mean, we're just gonna do this, right? And now he's given us this dollar, right? So now we have to do this, right? It's yeah. like, so not it, that we have to, we want to, right? Yeah. And, I mean, we are gonna do it regardless, right? And and then he tells us, he's like, my whole life I felt like a fraud, like nobody really knew who I was because I was never able to to share these stories of what happened to me, right? And and never had the space to be able to do that. And he's like, you ladies have given that to me. And now we're really balling. We're yeah. just like, like we know the work we're doing is important, right? But to hear our family member express such gratitude and then know that they've held on to this for so long, right? And 
you don't realize where that dysfunction in your family comes from, right? But if you think about, you know, both our grandparents were in the boarding school, and even my mom's generation, even though my, our, our moms weren't in the boarding schools, that generation was, right? 1988 was when Harbor Springs closed. That wasn't so long ago, 1988. Mm -hmm. In Canada, it was 1996 when the last boarding school closed, right? We could have gone to boarding school. If, if, our, if our grandma would have stayed on the reservation and our parents would have stayed, we could have been that generation gone to boarding school. Our generation has gone, just not us, right? And so to hear Uncle Francis is just like express so much gratitude and know that we're helping him release some of the things that he's been hanging on to, right? And that's what's led to so much dysfunction is when you feel like you can't talk to somebody or like it's almost like a shame part that you feel, mm -hmm. right? It leads to drinking. It leads to alcoholism. It leads to drug abuse. It leads to all these different things. And Uncle Francis has had a really bad start to his life and spent the first probably 30, 40 years of his life making bad decisions because he felt that's what he had to do. You know, he, mm -hmm. he was in the school, he was giving him a reason to beat him because he's going to get beat anyway, right? And just kind of continue that mentality through most of his life until he went to school, he got his doctoral degree. Here I'm thinking, I got my master's degree. I don't know how many people in my family have gotten that far, right? And then I hear he's got a doctoral degree. I'm like, well, crap, now I gotta keep going. <laughs> so UWGB is gonna be stuck with me for a while. So I'm just gonna keep on going with it, yeah. right? So we know that the work we're doing is important. We know that we're helping other family members get connected. And that's one of our biggest things that we wanna do mm -hmm. is it's been stripping from us, right? Like. We barely know the language and the culture and our traditions and ceremonies and all of that because we didn't grow up in that. And that was taken away from grandpa or grandma and grandpa, really. Right. And so part of the work we want to do is helping family reconnect. You know, it's never too late. It really isn't. And so that's one of the things we're hoping is and to whatever extent they want to help them get there. And right find our family we have so much family in canada that yeah we're just hitting these roadblocks and we'll talk more maybe next time about um what's led to some of the reasons why we can't find family records there too right 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 so again i'm going to share a business card oh cover up our name here ghana wenjigewakwe it means female history keepers um so We'll be launching our Facebook soon, so uh, we'll take some of you in it, and you can follow us and see the work that we're doing. And we're in the very, very beginning um, steps of the process of creating our nonprofit. And I think our next step is finding some fundraising, find mm -hmm. you know, to get our, to get it up and running and stuff. So yeah, yeah. super excited. Yeah, so, thank you all for joining us today. Yeah, miigwech. <laughs>